Hi class, it's Miss Miller. Today I want to talk to you about colonialism in the heart of darkness. I think that discussing this topic is going to shed some light on how we go about reading or navigating through the text. We look at these um, everyday objects, chess pieces, piano keys, billiard balls, um, buttons, even earrings, jewelry, bracelets, all of those items uh, we don't even realize or recognize those are made from ivory and come from animal tusks that we use every day. We may even take it for granted. Well, it may not be such an issue now, but in the time that the text was written, this was a big deal. Europe, European countries were going to Africa. Everyone was going to Africa and sort of exploiting the natural resources. So we're going to take a look at what that looks like in our text. We know that um, Conrad's career as a sailor, it really just coincided with the height of the British Empire. Everything was going really well for the British Empire, imperialism, colonialism, um, they were traveling the globe, and Conrad just happened to be in the middle of it. He was just an innocent, he started off as an innocent young child who saw all the different colors on the map and just wanted to travel the globe, wanted to travel the world. He had no idea what he was in for. And so um, his travels allowed him access to what was happening um, in different parts of the world, specifically with the British Empire and their idea of civilizing the natives in Africa. So the ivory trade in the Congo River, which is where the text takes place primarily, um, we see that Marlowe, which happens to be the narrator, assumes the role as an ivory trade agent. And he does that sort of naively, and he's excited to, to take this role on, regardless of the fact that the prior agent um, was, was killed. In, in, and so he still wants to do this. Um, Marlowe also has a fascination and obsession with Kurtz. And Kurtz is someone who is already in the Congo. Um, and he is already in Africa. He's, he's sort of idolized and worshipped. And maybe people on the outside don't recognize what he's doing, but he is exploiting the natives. He's, he's utilizing all the natural resources. He becomes extremely greedy. We'll soon learn about Kurtz, but Marlowe wants to meet him. And so that's really the whole purpose of the Heart of Darkness, is him going in to the Congo really to have access to Kurtz. And so, however, he sees firsthand the slaughtering of the elephants and the dehumanization of the natives for ivory. So if you recall in the beginning of the text, the, there was a doctor, a medical doctor, who examined his head to see, okay, I'm going to jokingly see if you change as a result of going into the Congo, because you can't go there without changing. And so ultimately, we're going to see that Marlowe, he experiences a great disappointment when he gets there to the Congo and recognizes what's happening. He begins to question the presence of the company in Africa and why he's even there doing that work. And so ultimately, he brings to light the darkness at the center of the universe. The British colonies are circling the globe at this time. The British Navy protected the sea lanes. The, um, they moved people and cargo throughout the empire. They exploited the natural resources. They used colonies at market, um, as markets for manufactured goods. They oppressed the native populations and taking advantage of their relative lack of sophistication. We will help you. We will help you with schools and religion and, um, and, and uh, med medical um, experience. All of these ideas, they brought the fruits of civilization to the non-white population um, that they governed. And so, you know, they, they, they thought that they were entitled, that they could do all of this. And here is where we struggle because it's this whole idea of conception versus reality. And a lot of people believe, many critics believe that Joseph Conrad had two purposes when constructing the heart of darkness. One is to determine the human condition and, and to recognize the good versus evil in the world and even within our own selves. But also his fascination with the European colonialism in Africa. And so there is the conception of what it is. We're there to civilize the people, help everyone. And 
the reality of what it is, the torture, the violence. So he is there with Heart of Darkness, and 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 obviously there's a journal he writes um, while he's in the Congo River, which also parallels to the works um, and and action in Heart of Darkness. But he we begin to see the problems that exist in the Congo River, the contradictions and the hypocrisy that exists. Um, at this time, there was this anti-colonial campaign, and many people felt as if the heart of darkness was sort of aligned with that campaign. Um, the natives, even though they appeared complicit and they did whatever they were supposed to and they fell in line, their resistance showed up through violence and cannibalism. And they, yes, really, and we're going to see that in the text. So this is what colonialism, maybe an introduction to it in terms of what you can expect in the heart of darkness.